hi everyone welcome back so this is the part two of baselining a graphql services with all the required things all the dependent module controllers or resolvers services uh, type definitions and all okay so what we are going to do here is this is our user module okay sorry for the typo and this is our auth module and what all other things we are going to have which we already know okay we have a database module config module and logger module we'll put them here because these are like at the root level at the domain level log database and maybe a config module so all these are available inside user module and this is our domain module where we are going to inject everything and this is our app module this is our main.ts bootstrapping the application that's it here we are using nest.js uh, graphql this is the module and nest.js apollo is another module i guess i think these two modules are doing the, the main of the magic and apart from that we are using nest.js type orm and all the other modules right so user module here what all components we are going to define we already have a dot dot graphql file where we are going to define the type definitions the query mutations input types and uh, custom types here we are going to write a resolver where we will write the query mutations and all I mean the actual methods, the implementation of uh, whatever we have defined inside a dot schema file. It's a schema first approach we are using, not the code first. And then we have a service like user service, auth service, and uh, this is the module. This is the user module. Same components we have here in the auth module. We are going to write a query, query and type definitions for the simple login, refresh token, validate. So dot graphical file resolver for all the the methods all the queries and mutation you have defined inside schema file we have a service and then we have module right so these are the two modules we have which are going to we are going to add that that in the domain module then we already have at these uh, database module logger modules that obviously we are going to add it to the domain module when it's required we can add them at the module level like in the user module and auth module we can add them directly okay and this domain module will be added to the app module and then we have a main.ts file which will bootstrap our application a simple layer now what are the the major components resolvers here we are going to use a new annotations annotation resolver like annotation injectable in the dot graphql file is a simple schema based file what it contain is just a type definitions queries and mutations okay so we are going to write a uh, custom types and all those things will happen here now we will try to understand this thing what it does so these are the queries we which our this service is going to support that means these are actually the graphql types underscore uh, add capital user these are the types we are going to define that will have a username password email and all and this exclamation sign means that is a required property because when you are doing user by id id is required and it is going to give you the single user object this is going to give you an array of uh, users okay forget password is going to return a boolean these you are going to put inside your schema and then inside your resolver you are going to define all these methods so how your resolver looks like inside your resolver you are going to actually write these methods so i'll just put a simple snippet that will help you to understand this is my simple resolver what this resolver is saying is okay i can i can respond to this user query which is returning user as an array right so this is typically my resolver and then we already know how to write a service because this resolver is dependent on service it is injected it has injected a user service there and it is doing await this dot user service dot get all user so we already know we will define this get all user method inside a user service 
user service will be dependent on the type ORM repository which is provided by database entities okay here we are going to have entities also all the user entities because here there is only one table so here we have a user entity right that will create a table because we are going to use an SGS type ORM which will bootstrap our database table we already have a docker compose setup container of databases running so same process we will do for the this uh, auth module user module auth module auth module will do the login refresh token validate and all and on top of that we are going to use the same auth guard and jwt strategies once it is set up here we are going to add auth guard and jwt strategy what they will do is they will sit on top of your resolver right so if let's say if you are logged in and you are sending authorization header so before going to the resolver like get me this user data i need to first pass through these uh, auth guard jwt guard validate the token and validate the expiry and give you the user object so this is pretty much the structure of uh, this module there is no major change only now we have a dot graphql file and the resolver and what this dot graphql file will do is this dot graphql file will generate the types when you do npm run start with the basic setup it is going to generate a dot ts file that we will see and those types you can use inside a resolver like create user input find user input these all these types will get created when you, once you bootstrap the graphql uh, application and then you will see you can use them inside a resolver so resolver is your controller there you are defining query mutation subscription like uh, we were writing controller in the rest apis like we were writing a simple controller file here we are writing a simple resolver file that's a major difference we are defining dot graphql file and at the main module what we are doing is we are actually using this graphql module dot for root if you remember the syntax we were using in the the last video what this does so maybe this is a little important here i'm looking for all the dot graphql files and it will generate uh, this type inside a source folder there i those i can use as a dto and this is the context this is a driver apollo federation driver because i'm going to consume this subgraph in the apollo federation router gateway okay this you can put inside your domain module this will sit inside your uh, domain module okay and then all the injection you will put all the modules in the domain modules and domain module you will put uh, inside app module so this is pretty much the the folder structure and skeleton look like this is a schema first in the code first you don't write a dot graphql files you write a models typescript models instead of dot graphql files so you don't need to generate the types and all but I love writing a GraphQL schema because this is how the GraphQL is initially built. You write your types, queries, uh, custom input types and all. And then you just write a resolvers for that. So here we are. What we will do is we will try to set up these things. Here this is my user entity. Okay. And I will just add all the dependencies like type ORM, NestJS type ORM, Postgres. All the required modules I will add like NestJS, Apollo, NestJS, uh, graphql this entity is a database entity now this entity we uh, i will be writing database module config module logger module for all those things for now i will just show and i will just comment this code database module dot for root and i will pass all the entities currently in this microservice i have only user entity so i will just pass it and then once this uh, if you see this domain module what do we have it is going to have all the modules inside it database module auth module config module logger module and then all the user module and auth module okay so we will create all these separate modules together database module config module which will populate the configuration from process.env from your .env file to process.env and the logger module just to do some logging and debugging purpose uh, okay so here we are going to define the types this is uh, this is really important to understand if you are looking at the graphql for the first time 
we use type query type mutation and for custom types we use input like input types which you are passing in these methods so query means you are requesting data like give me the users give me the users by id give me the users by email give me the users by id email update password forget password reset password these are these becomes mutation because there you are changing the state so we are defining this user type which contains id email permissions is a string array first name and you can see this exclamation sign that means it is required first name is required last name is required in the user entity i mean in the user type the name is also required so this is query and uh, picture url logo url i think that we can skip for now and create a date and updated that is of type date so date is a custom scalar date and here we have a use it now what is the query query means give me the user by id give me the user by email and find all the users all these are queries you are requesting uh, your microservice to give you the data so all those are annotated with the query and here you can i'm creating custom user input find users find users i can find user by email first name last name so attributes are optional in the find user so here i created a custom type input find user input so we will define this custom type as an input type because for the graph we will find user input they don't know they know only string boolean number object these are the graph will pre-built type but when it when it comes to custom you need to define them as a input property so here we can define that using input i guess input uh, find user input and then define all the properties and here this is the find user input so email optional first name optional we don't we are not going to use exclamation sign because this is the optional property and what graphql apollo graphql server will do is it will look into this schema file and they are going to generate a dto for us once we bootstrap our graphql system and those dto's we can use in these methods so exclamation means really required and you have to pass it to actually get through that here we are using exclamation at most of the places right that means those properties are required so this is like a function definition user and it is returning user array similarly we are going to define other type create user input update user input these are the input types because these are like the payload of a function this is you are sending as an input so create user input all are uh, required We'll put a exclamation sign, email, password, first name, last name, and update user input. You are updating it, so you may you may or may not pass the values, right? So update user update password property is optional, but if you are passing password, then I'm going to create another custom type which is update password input, and there first name uh, old password and new password I wanted to pass, and both are required. So this is how we define the, you can see the, another way of defining DTOs using schema based approach in the NSCS GraphQL. And then all our other properties are optional. I mean, all are optional. And then similarly, we will define the mutation. So first of all, query and then mutation. Mutation means I'm just wanted to update a user, create a user, delete a user, reset a password. All those operations will be here. I create user update user by id update user by email um, and here i'm going to use this custom input types i have created custom user input and it is going to give us give me single user object after creating the user similarly we can define all the methods create user update user create user update user and uh, yeah couple of these methods i will just copy this from my snippet And then once we have it, we will write uh, the resolvers and the services in the, the user module and in the auth module. So first of all, we are we, once we are done with the types, this schema.graphql file for the users, same we need to create for the auth module because in the auth module, we can define the login, refresh token mechanism or validate token mechanism inside that particular .graphql file. 
here update user by id and update user by email takes two argument fails to update the payload which you want to send and the email or you want to update the the user by id because email is unique and id is also unique and then we also have a, another property because we are using roles so you can assign admin can assign a new role a remover role so there is a add add uh, admin permission remove admin permission and you just need an email id for that if you have a if you are authorized to do that you can uh, update a permission of a user and then last i think the reset password reset password will take uh, two argument your some kind of a code or email and uh, now these types are important what we are typing string id and all all are in the caps upper case i mean the camel case okay scalar date so this is the type definition for user dot types dot graphql so similarly we are going to define that for the auth so here we will define the type query type mutation i think we are doing only type query here there is no mutation mutations we are doing in the user module type query means okay i'm just doing a login refresh token or validate login user input uh, because you are going to send a authentication api login api which where you are going to send email and password both are required so i will just send a user login user input and it is going to return me a login result this is the custom type i am going to create and i am doing some mistake here that we will see a refresh token is also of type string validate uh, token is of type string we can return i guess an object from these methods refresh and validate they will give us the currently logged in user object so we can define the the types for it so either we create we written the the current logged in user object or we can define a custom type login result so login result will be a simple user object okay this user has logged in and you will just return a token with that and here refresh token and the validate token these are other query methods those are returning me the user object so here we can create a custom type like token result which is going to give me the user access token and the refresh token these are the three properties and this token result can be used at the refresh token and validate token query right instead of user object you return the aggregate uh, object with these properties so this is like a schema definition dot graphql file we have for the auth module okay now we can bootstrap the whole app with these two things only we can write a resolver services later we can see how the, the nextjs graphql works we can write a resolver of the user now this uh, uppercase user the camel case user is defining okay i'm going to write a, i'm writing a user resolver for the the user definition user types i have created so all the queries and mutation i can define inside a user resolver and the what resolver will do is it is going to call the user service get the data and return it that's this process is same instead of controller now we are writing a user resolver this controller will define all the methods like query mutation subscription and now query users right query users give me all the users so async i think we async is optional here and we can return we will just call this service this dot user service dot and we are going to define some method i'm just putting the placeholders right now we will fill we will do the fill in the blanks later like putting the user service auth service and putting all the things i'm just trying to bootstrap this application with the annotations so these are the annotations you need to be familiar annotation query annotation mutation annotation resolver and you are going to use the same values here this is important users this is create user these values create user user line 13 line 18 should be the exact same name and the argument argument well name should also be the same whatever you have defined in the input types you can see the create user input so same name otherwise you will get confused what is going on you won't be able to debug it properly and here we are going to for now just put any or the custom types we are going to generate through the this whole process so first of all let's comment this one now and let's create a, let's bootstrap the graphql service and this 
user service let's uh, see what is in there so what we will do is let's create a we already have created a domain module and where there we have bootstrapped uh, the graphql module which is looking for these types so so for now to run this application i'm just removing this service commenting some code and then i will just do npm run start dev and let's see how it works because we already have uh, things already in place this is the domain module we will add a domain module inside a app module and then we will bootstrap the app module through the main.ts okay the installation is done we have all the dependency there we will just do npm run start dev okay all the things are resolved currently it's just a very basic setup we don't have any much code we just created the, these graphql files domain module is using nestjs graphql module graphql module dot for root now we will just run this application and see what happens we might get some errors based on the because it is looking at these your dot graphql files and if it finds something it will report it unknown type string so let's see do we are we using string anywhere lowercase string yes uh, so we can fix it and restart the application we may get another error or oh, let's see okay we have another error which is unknown type file okay i used a file but i didn't define what is the file type so for now i we can remove this file type and let's see i run rerun the application in the watch mode and uh, now i have set up everything it is the okay still there is an error query dot login user must view up input type card log user input so let's go to our user input type okay what is wrong here this login user type okay let's try we just change the variable value okay i'm just rerunning the whole application again and let's see uh, still an error let's read this must be of input type but got login user input okay yes this should be of input type right because it's uh it is what you are passing in the payload of the function so it should be of input type not a custom type like type token result and now i can run this application again and it should start as we don't have anything okay this is has started and you can see once it is starting it should generate one graphql file this is the the dto kind of file you have you have received whatever the types you have defined the graphql has converted those into the types so you can use these types in your uh, services resolvers like the dto's like create user input this is the custom type login user input uh, user update user input find user input now we can go to our resolver uncomment couple of lines and we can use this create user input now from the classes and this user service we will create a user service as an injectable service and put uh, the basic things so this is how we are going to set up and same same way we are going to create auth service auth resolvers we are going to use these custom types added and now user service we will uh, inject the user repository uh, once we set up the database module so next thing what we are going to do is setting up the database module config module logger module and then we'll come back here and we will start writing these resolvers the code okay this is how you will do the create user update user and do the login and all those things